Hi everyone, my name is Fatma, and you're listening to a bonus episode of The Paper Cut, a podcast about books and reading from the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia. I'm coming to you live from Emirates Literature Festival, the 12th annual Literature Festival of Dubai. And as I'm speaking, I'm standing right in front of, well, not right in front of, but I'm <laughs> looking directly at Tayari Jones, who's just chatting away with um, a festival goer. And the excitement in the area is palpable. Everyone is super excited. Saturday is usually a really big day because it's the day before the big finale and there have been a huge host of amazing authors, publishers, editors, people who work in the um, writing and book industry. And it's, um, it's been an amazing Saturday so far. Um, I'm just going to give you a little rundown of what I've been to so far and my final event for the day, which is yet to come. I started off with an amazing, truly insightful um, panel discussion between uh, Tayari Jones, uh, Essie Edujan, who I saw yesterday, and Claire McIntosh, author of After the End. And I have to say it was one of the most emotional talks of the day because the topic of discussion was relationships under strain. And I mean, the clue is in the title. It talks about all uh, the different strange relationships that make a book so compelling and all of that friction that creates uh, good storytelling or good character um, building as well. And um, it was uh, a very interesting way to look at the different, uh, uh, different approaches that each author had. They definitely have very different approaches. And it was very clear that the... The topics which were of great interest to each author was what really propelled the relationships in um, in their books. So, for example, for Essie Edujan, she, her primary responsibility or her that she put upon herself was to uh, tell the story of enslaved people and um, their relationships with one another, their relationships with themselves, and the relationships with the people who enslaved them as well as the wider communities and societies who would or would not accept them. And for Claire McIntosh, her book After the End was about a story about two parents who had a child on life support and had to make the difficult decision of whether to end that life support or to keep it going. And that came directly out of Claire McIntosh's personal experience, which was really difficult to hear, that she had a son in 2006 who was in exactly the same situation and she and her husband had to make that difficult decision. Uh, and ultimately they did made the, make the decision to, to take him out of intensive care and eventually he passed on. And it was extremely um, uh, emotional to, to hear that um, <clears throat> and to, to see how much of herself she had put into it. And it took her this long, you know, from 2006 until 12 years later in 2018 when she started writing to actually uh, get enough sort of strength to um, go, you know, go back to that trauma. And um, f um, sorry, there's just a couple of mascots here that look a little bit frightening. Does, is it just me or do mascots look really terrifying? Anyway, and with Tayari Jones, her book is about a couple, uh, an African American couple, who uh, the man gets incarcerated, and um, and how his relationship with his wife gets strained after that. And one of her um, one of her uh, motivations uh, in writing this book was to retell the story of the su long suffering wife who waits for her husband until he gets out of prison, and that part of being a good wife is to have to suffer. And um, she just wanted to. Um, give another um, give an alternative to women to read about that you don't have to be like if uh, and, and she was inspired by um, a fight that she heard a couple having in a mall somewhere in, in the United States where um, a she heard a couple fighting and she heard the wife say to the husband um, you know you wouldn't uh, Roy you know you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't have waited for me for seven years. And his response to her was, well, you, if it were you, we wouldn't have been in this position anyway, or something like that. And it just made her think about how uh, the dynamic between a husband and a wife uh, sometimes is contingent upon the wife having to tolerate a whole load of stuff um, 
and, and, and that would then give her the characteristic of being a quote unquote good wife. So that was really interesting. And, and honestly speaking, the, the talk was so intense that uh, I will say that there were a few tears um, shed and hugs shared. And it was, it was a fantastic event, uh, uh, really, really worthwhile, worth um, getting up early on a Saturday. Um, next up was next up was a pretty blockbuster uh, panel discussion. It was titled "Faith in the Modern World," and we had a pretty stellar uh, group up on stage. It was uh, Mitch Album, famous author, critically acclaimed author, and best-selling author of many books. Most uh, probably most popular one is "Tuesdays with Maury," as well as Five People You Meet in Heaven," and. Um, and many more. Uh, next, also sitting alongside him was Gilong Tubten, who, who is a Buddhist monk who um, teaches his own brand of secular uh, meditation or mindfulness to people who want to engage in mindfulness and um, sort of make use of that resource, but without the religious and spiritual aspect to it. Um, uh, and he wrote Amongst Guide to Happiness. And next up was Leslie Hazelton, who is obviously a well-known writer of nonfiction, who wrote The First uh, Muslim, which is a biography about the Prophet Muhammad. And I haven't read her book, but I have heard rave reviews about it, really, really fantastic reviews. And um, she did not disappoint, I have to say. She was amazing. Um, and uh, if, last but not least, there was the ambassador Omar Saif Khobash, who wrote the best-selling Letters to a Young Muslim, observations on Islam and how to navigate the world as a Muslim in a very difficult uh, uh, time. The dis discussion was very interesting. It was actually attended by the Minister for Culture and Youth. I think that's the correct title and uh, of, of the UAE. And as well, um, you know, um, it was a full house as you can imagine um, the topic was faith in the modern world and people asked a lot of questions it was really cool that Riz got uh, was uh, generous enough to allow most of the time to be question and answer rather than a discussion followed by question and answer and I think that that's what the audience really wanted and uh, we asked some tough questions and we heard some pretty controversial answers I never thought I would ever hear um, people talking about um, uh, the Prophet Muhammad in such a way not it wasn't disrespectful in any way but there it was there was a lot of freedom of expression um, and um, and um, it, it felt kind of racy and controversial to me um, but I really appreciated it and uh, there was also talk about homosexual communities in the Muslim world there was uh, you know discussions about uh, extremists Boko Haram and and how technology is affecting us and I mean there really were a lot of hot button topics discussed um, and answered pretty thoughtfully by all of the um, all of the panelists and um, uh, I got to have a little chat with all of them afterwards and um, I, I did ask uh, a question to the audience and uh, to the audience to the panelists and um, was uh, my question was basically because Leslie Hazelton was talking about how um, we shouldn't give extremists the right to define themselves as whatever religion they pretend to be. So we shouldn't give extremist Muslims the right to um, call themselves Muslims or we shouldn't believe them when they say it because they clearly know nothing about the religion they proclaim to be from. And, um, and we should fight back in that way. And my question to her was how do we fight back? Because I, c I consider myself to be a moderate person and a peaceful person. And um, how can I, as a moderate person, combat an extremist? It, it seems to be some kind of, uh, we're at an impasse in some way. Like, should, should we turn into moderate uh, mo extremist moderates or moderate extremists? I don't even know what the word is, but that was my question. And unfortunately, um, I wasn't able to get a full answer, but the reason why was because, well, first of all, Rizkan didn't allow the panelists to answer my question for some reason, and he asked his own, which I thought was like really weird, but 
um, it was really cool that Leslie Hazelton came back to my question a couple of questions later. She was like, I really want to talk about this. Like, we should be angry. We should be upset about this. How can we not be upset when people are hijacking our religions? And um, she actually brought the question back and redirected it to Geelong because of his um, experience uh, uh, in a monastery and, and as a Buddhist, you know, practicing um, uh, mindfulness and peacefulness and nonviolence and uh, forgiveness as uh, virtues. Um, how can we uh, maintain those whilst there is so much um, violence and, 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 and there are so many horrific acts taking place in the name of religion? And, and I was really pleased with Geelong's answer. I mean, he, he made a really good point is that we shouldn't just uh, fight these people. We should try to understand them. And that's the... Oh, hello. There's a mascot looking at me right now. I'm going to take a picture with him. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm back. I just took a picture with a mascot and I now forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, we should think, think about understanding each other and understanding even people who are um, so-called extremists uh, because if we co are constantly fighting them, we're never going to be able to understand them and it's only through understanding that we are able to um, overcome these uh, this kind of objectionable behavior and, and, and make put a stop to it and it will actually unite us rather than one team vanquishing the other yeah it was great um, finally um, I uh, had a quick 30 minute um, session with Graham Simpson and Anne, I want to say Anne Bu Buist I actually don't know how to pronounce her name Buist, Buist. and uh, she talked about I mean they talked about their book which they co-wrote together uh, called Two Steps Forward, which is a, a, a book about two people who separately go on a journey, a pilgrimage, a walking from Cluny in the south of France to Santiago, which is a, uh, an ancient um, or a very old Catholic ritual, um, which uh, a lot of worshippers still do today, and a lot of um, uh, non-Catholic people also undertake for other spiritual reasons. And the two writers actually took that journey together for spiritual reasons, not Catholic. They're not Catholic, but they decided to take that journey together and decided that they should write a book about it. And they just talked about the process. And honestly speaking, I haven't read Two Steps Forward just yet, but I've read um, The Rosie Effect. And I really, really loved that um, book. And I was curious because his personality, I feel it really shines through in The Rosie Effect. And honestly speaking, Graham Simpson's personality is exactly as you would imagine by reading the book. He is extremely brilliant. He is very, very funny. He is very kind and just super easygoing, like laid back, like every Australian person I know. And his wife is brilliant as well. Like they just are just adorable together and they are serious goals, like amazing. Um, basically, that's it for my final day at the book festival. Uh, but I'm really excited to be attending my final session a, a couple of hours from now um, by Stuart Turton, who's going to be talking about his book, The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. And what's really weird is I haven't actually read the whole book. I mean, I've, I'm halfway through it, and I'm wondering if I have enough time to actually whiz through the last 150 pages. But honestly speaking, I don't think so. But I'm just going to beg the guy not to give any spoilers Anyways, sorry for the uh, huge uh, uh, chaos that's uh, surrounding. This is a audio nightmare, but I'm right in the middle of the festival. There's children, mascots, uh, parents, uh, just nerds everywhere. And it's really, really, really fun. I'm totally in my element. I'm with my people. Very happy right now. And also, I just wanted to say, not that anyone from the Literature Festival is ever going to hear this, but... I, I did want to extend a huge, huge, huge thanks to the Emirates Literature Festival uh, uh, staff and volunteers um, who are uh, putting in a huge amount of effort. And um, I've honestly watched them like work their butt off um, throughout this time. And it's so heartening to see like there are even high school students volunteering here. Um, you know, I, I just love seeing it. And, and the majority of the people here are with their children. And uh, I commend them for that because I made the very conscious decision of leaving my child at home 
because I can't be bothered <laughs> to, to navigate this area with, <laughs> with, with a child. But, um, but the, the people who, who are doing that are the true heroes, honestly. Um, okay, that's me signing off from uh, Emirates Literature Festival year 12. I hope to uh, come back again next year. I honestly can't wait to see what next year is going to bring because... All right, guys, that's it. See you next time. And until then, happy reading.